Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the Galleon TSA 75 two-channel power amplifier from our good friend Thomas Tan of Thomas and Stereo, one of the OG YouTube guys. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about this amplifier. So the TSA 75 is a 75 watt per channel into 8 ohm, 100 watt per channel into 4 ohm, two channel power amplifier only. It is very robustly constructed. It is fully solid state. It is a dual mono balanced design. And when we look inside, I'll be able to show you all of that. It has some great features. It has a reported frequency response of 15 hertz to 40,000 hertz, has a very high damping factor, and it is designed around being a high current amplifier. And I believe that is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. We're going to spin this around and then we're going to take a look inside and then I'll talk about how it sounds. Well, I think the back panel will give you a hint as to the design of this amplifier. And if I could give you a hint, bad say why sorry. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you want to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. And there's also a membership link in the pinned comment and in the description of the video. And I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. So this should give you an indication. It is a mono amplifier, dual mono amplifier internally. So we've got right side here, left side there. And internally, you'll see that that's the way it's laid out. Single ended in or balanced and then a switch to go between single ended and balanced, which I think is very clever, which means it keeps this fully balanced all the way through the amplifier. And obviously single ended is not balanced. It's a sum signal. So it really, uh, I think a, a nice little touch and a, and a thoughtful touch as well. Good quality bonding post. IEC socket, really well laid out unit. So that's the back panel of the TSA 75. We're gonna open it up and take a look inside. Okay, here we are looking inside the Galleon TSA 75. A really intelligent layout. What you'll notice right off the bat is the big toroidal transformer and obviously the power supply for the amplifier. Now, this is just one channel. Underneath it is the duplicate of that. So it is truly dual mono with mono power supplies, one for each channel. This one covers this channel, the one on the bottom covers the, the next channel over. One of the other things with 200,000 microfarads of capacitance, that's a ton in the power supply. And the good news, these are all very high quality Elna caps, very good quality. And all the little red ones you'll see floating around inside the circuit board, those are all WEMA. So very, very good quality components. The interesting thing is they did with the output transistors, which is a TSA-129 PNP and NPN combination in the TO44 case. These are not super traditional transistors. There's one for the positive side, down lower is one for the negative side. So it is a push-pull, um, but with only two devices per side. Again, that's part of the 75 watts per channel uh, into 8 ohms and 100 watts per channel into 4 ohms. But beautifully designed, fully balanced, great architecture, very well thought out, very, very impressive product for $1,500. Now, let's button it up and we're going to talk about how it sounds. Well, you can see from looking inside the amplifier, it was very well designed, very thoughtfully designed. I mean, the dual mono layout is so important for good channel separation and also allowing the amplifier to provide the appropriate signal to the speakers so that they can lay down the image that they're capable of. And I think amplifiers have a very good amplifier really doesn't have a lot of effect on imaging other than just passing the signal through and getting out of the way and providing all the power the speaker needs. And this did a really good job. So how did I use it? I paired it up with a bunch of different stuff. I paired it up with the Cambridge Evo 150 as a preamp, and that was a very, very good combination, although a bit cool because the Cambridge is a little bit cool in the top end. Um, some folks have mentioned, some reviewers have said they thought that this had a bit of a V-shaped curve in its response. And I don't know that I agree with that. I think maybe it has a little emphasized bass, just ever so slightly emphasized, which I really like. I found the mid-range to be very neutral and clean and the upper frequencies to be extended and really, really nice. So 
again, as I mentioned, the job of an amplifier is just to get out of the way of the, of the signal that's coming into it and getting that out to the speakers without modifying it or messing with it in any way, shape, or form. And then the speakers can do what the speakers do. So it was a good combination with the Evo 150. I also ran it with a Shit Freya preamp for just a brief period of time, just a couple of days, because I had to send that back. One of the longer previews I did or reviews I did with it was using the Audiolab MDAC Plus as a preamp. And you may remember in my video on that, I said it was the best sounding ESS Sabre chip based DAC I'd ever heard. It was very, very good, but it also had a really good preamp section. So that combination was extraordinary. That was a great combination with this as a digital front end to this amplifier. It was just wonderful. Um, I also, and surprisingly, I found my favorite combination was with the Sparkos Gemini, it's over there. It's a little headphone, balanced headphone amp, but it's also a preamp, a single-ended preamp. And it has a tube in it. I'm currently using a 12BH7 in it. And the neat thing about that little preamp, and I'm gonna do a full review on it, is it has a really good Alps Velvet Pod in it. It also has on high and low gain. On high gain, it's mostly Andrew's custom design op amps that are running that unit, but on low gain, it's almost all tube. And I found on low gain with that 12BH7 with this, running uh, using the uh, Gishelli Daisy DAC as a source. Wow, that was magic city. Oh my goodness. And I paired it up with the Big Wharfdales and that sounded amazing. They have a lot of drive and a lot of power and that's a big, big sound. But the surprising thing was when I paired it up with the ELAC DBR62s is they laid down an image that was almost as good as the monitor audios that I reviewed recently. It was that kind of level of image, just amazing. And again, the best thing I can say about the amplifier is it takes a signal from whatever the input is, passes it through, powers it, and sends it out to the speakers without any uh, modification or molestation of the signal. And this does a great job with it. The, the, the background, the noise level is really, really low. The dynamic range is, I think it has far more power than, their, than the specifications would indicate. I think it also is a, it is a very high current design and I can hear that. You could, all of that power on reserve is obviously with all of those 200,000 uh, microfarads of capacitance, this thing could start and stop on a dime. It is what I would categorize as a fast amp. Is it as fast as the Orchard Audio Class D? No, but it's also, you know, less than half the price of that amp. At $1,500, this thing's really a good buy. Is it the giant killer that Thomas says it is? Yeah, I would say so, up to maybe 2,500 bucks in cost. Um, is it going to topple, you know, a product like the Orchard Audio or a product like some of the big, you know, the entry level Krells and things like that. No, um, is it, it is just, it's really good. And I think it's, I think it's a big, a great value because I think you get more than you would expect for the $1,500 you spend. So again, great bass, fast, good response. It got out of the way of the music. It was able to deliver all of the peaks and all of the energy that the speakers need to reproduce music uh, accurately, like this piece from Sir George Schulte in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Tremendous dynamics. It'll be cruising along very quietly. And then all of a sudden, the full orchestra and a full crescendo. And this just was able to deliver that power virtually instantaneously. And it was just really wonderful. Now, again, I, you know, I think it might have just a little bit of emphasis in the bass. And one of the ways I was able to kind of figure that out is with these, this album from Solar Fields, which is kind of ambient techno, um, it's got great bass in it, but it also can be quiet and in a lot of bass. Now, it's mostly synthesized stuff, but it also lays down a huge image. And unless you've got a really, really good, high quality, closely mic'd jazz quartet or something acoustic recording or a good, well mic symphony orchestra, all of the imaging we hear in rock and roll and contemporary music and everything is all manufactured in the studio. Some of these guys do a really good job, and that Solar Fields album does a really good job at it. And it was really rewarding. So I just really enjoyed this amplifier. I think it's a great value. I think it is, it delivers on its promise. I think it gives you more than what you're actually paying for as far as the performance value quotient. Very, very nice.
Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you'll give me a like and a subscribe. And if you wish, you can support the channel. There's a thank you button at the bottom of the video screen. There's also membership links in the pinned comment and in the description of the video, as well in, as in the description of the video, there are affiliate links. And obviously you know what that were, how those work. There are also my playlists in there with some of my reference tracks and things like that. Um, I'm grateful for you guys sending me playlists. I would encourage everyone to continue to do so. That's starting to flesh out on the community page, on the post page. Um, and there's been, I found some great music through that too. So thank you guys so very much. Um, please comment. If you do, everyone knows that if you comment, I respond, uh, good, bad, or ugly. If you leave me a bad comment, I respond. If you leave me a great comment, I like that. And I respond. But anyway, so that's that. That's the TSA 75 from Galleon. I'm Ed Holmwood. This is the old guy hi-fi channel. I really appreciate the time you give me. Thank you so very much and have a great day.